this is like the first year of the exchange program where Auroville is inviting people from other communities, totally different environment and bringing up, trying to immerse themselves with Auroville and get a sense of it. Yes, yeah, so I think this is, exchange is a beautiful idea. Having Aurovillians go outside, I think it's, it's a beautiful work to spread the awareness of the richness of Auroville, what it has to offer. But it's not just that. I, I have learned a lot, you know, from coming here too. And I hope to take that back and, and share with the Aurovillians through film, through presentations, what we can learn, what Aurovillians can learn from these remote communities. There's so much, it's an exchange of both ways. I come from a region called Zanskar within Natal. It's a 9,000 square kilometer area with 800 more so glaciers. It is going through a very rapid change. Within Ladakh, it is going to be the next Leh, and Leh has already reached a saturation point. You know, and Zanskar will soon. Then we're just trying to maneuver and see if we could be a part of deciding our own fate. And if we want to, as a community together, making them understand, sensitizing, mobilizing the community to understand the depth of this threat. At the same time, having some optimistic hope that we could do something different, alternative. We could dream together about something else. And if there is one place uh, where I could come and have all these learnings from different alternative solutions that has been applied for many decades with people who have been associated with certain solutions for 30, 40 years, it is Auroville. similarities and differences. I think the first would be, they're both deserts, right? Well, Oroville now is a forest, but it was a desert, and this is a high altitude desert. Comes with this harshness, this having to survive. I really respect the pioneers of Oroville for having to deal with this desert and having to survive in creating the forest. And I feel here in the Dak, and in particular Zanska, how people are surviving self-sufficiently but with happiness and pleasure, and they can do it all, everything they need, you know? What is it, just salt and sugar, like the things that are brought in, everything else, the people are self-sufficient. To survive, you have to come together as a community, and this place does it so well. I think Oroville could learn from this a little bit more about what is community.
I have been working water solutions since I left high school, mainly because my own village was facing scarcity. You know, we wanted to find a solution. And the more I tried different solutions that were already you know, proven techniques, uh, they worked pretty well, but then these were quick fixes and banded solutions, you know? So I wanted to look for more sustainable, cost-effective uh, and the scalable solution. That's when I realized, well, technology is already available. Per se, there is no scarcity of water in these villages, although they are, they are running out of their glacier water sources, but then the rivers, river is abundant for now. lift water in villages where there are uh, facing acute scarcity and then beyond that you know uh, support livelihood at the same time how is it relevant to the world because 10 mega rivers in the world are depend on the glaciers in the himalayas but there is no one specific policy that caters to this very sensitive ecos ecosystem you know The main thing I see is, yeah, how climate change and the work that you do, how important this is. And I think I really learned that watching you, being with you, seeing the environment here, this is a very sensitive microclimate here, you know? And so we need to take care of that. And I think also with Oroville. Why am I, I am here and what am I up to back home? So right now I have started a movement, environmental movement, sensitizing, mobilizing people, at the same time bridging this community's indigenous knowledge with policy, governance, politics. I needed to know about how does the town planning work? How does the decentralized waste management work? How do they take care of solid waste management? Getting to you know as much as I can. I, would, I wanted to stretch as much as I can. So it was really a stir up. And I've met so many people. They inspire me, they motivate me. Every now and then you were finding some link with Oroville, you know, somewhere it has been inspired or somewhere they, you know, they have already come to this place. How was it as a revelation? It's amazing. Yeah, like these random coincidences, you know, I would, I believe they're all perfect timing at the perfect place. One of the first ones was uh, meeting the doctors who came from America, which do this one month health camp in Zanskar and seeing that they're distributing Ecofem cloth pads. When I saw these pads, I was like, wow, okay, this is Oroville. How did you find out about this? Then I went with them for a few days to the nunneries and, and filmed, and I shared that with Ecofem. Also going to the Segmore School. This was beautiful. I believe these children are the future Orovidians. There's so many beautiful things that they're doing there, which I think it's also the aspiration of Oroville. Self-governance, self-education, looking at how they want to structure their day, living together in human unity. One thing for sure, whatever I have learned here, now when I go back home, in the context of our region, we would like to have uh, projects going on where we could bridge Oroville with Zanskar.
Being with you in Zanskar and being witness to all these beautiful ceremonies, these ancient traditions, these spirits of for everything, the plants, the mountains, the sky, respecting it, honoring it, asking before doing. But you were saying before, like digging a hole, you, you ask permission, you seek permission from the spirit. This is beautiful. Uh, and I think a lot of ancient wisdom from all over the world does this also. So we need to connect with these roots. For me, the biggest link is spirituality. Oroville is a spiritual community. And Ladakh and Zanskar in particular is a spiritual community. But I see your passion is you just want to save Zanska. That you said if, if you lose that, you've got nothing, right? And actually, I feel the same about Oroville. I, Oroville is my life, my soul, my heart, my home. And yeah, if I lose Oroville, I also have nothing. I've met very beautiful people, you know, wise people. These people are always going to be there no matter where I go. I do something. I always keep them in mind and I will come back again. And this, this, is, this is a home too. Yeah.